Hello Darklings! So I figured I would try something. I once did a sketchbook show and tell video, but it was really, really rushed. And I figured I would kind of do it sketchbook by sketchbook. So because I'm starting several sketchbooks on, I'm going to kind of work my way forward and get caught up. So this one is my first of my moleskins. So if you haven't used a moleskin sketchbook and you like sketchbooks, I do recommend these. They're kind of pricey, but the paper texture and the size is just really convenient. It's like five by eight. And for some reason, this is a really comfortable size. It's very easy to fit in my messenger bag. Uh, and something about the paper size isn't daunting because I know I've had a problem where I will dedicate certain sketchbooks be like, oh, I only can put this in this sketchbook. And then I just would never fill them. I'd get like 10 pages and then stop and then buy another one. But these were kind of the, I'm not going to care what I put in here, no matter how rough it is sketchbooks. So this is the first one from, I want to say October or November of 2011. So it's, it's kind of, it's older and it's a little painful to look at because it's really ugly to me. And this is the first time that I tried gluing things into sketchbooks consistently. And this one features a lot of tea bags because my freshman year of college, I drank a lot of tea. So I'm trying to see because most of the stuff in here ended up being really bad sketches and a lot of stuff having to do with tea and bad caricatures. And so a lot of this is mostly just scribbles and I guess some fortune cookies, random images. I think I drew a light socket or um, a statue, another, I think this was from a life drawing class. And it was from a drawing class at the beginning of my freshman year. So drawing classmates, drawing professors, drawing other classmates. Some of these are admittedly so hideous, it does hurt a little bit to look at them. This is also when I was still very, very, very into Emily Autumn, and so there's a lot of references that are quite similar to that. And I also have some music lyrics put in here. Uh, let's see. Lots of Marilyn Manson in here, too. Lots of Rhino references. This is a, I think this was a building at school. This was one of my dogs who sadly passed away last year. But yeah, this one's just kind of painful. Like this was a corner on the inside of my bed. This was some drapery in, in my old canopy in my bed. And this was just an image I found online and thought was interesting. This is a little stone bear at my mom's house and my mom's cat. But the, the point is with this, even though it's a little cringeworthy for me to look at now, is that inspiration can really come from anywhere. Like this was from when I went to tea with my mom. Like, and I, I started just gluing all kinds of things in here as a way to, to fill it, as a way to sort of get ideas out. Again, lots of Marilyn Manson and Manson lyrics. Uh, planning for larger paintings. It ended up never being finished. I drew a lot of spoons. Um, movie tickets. I started putting movie tickets in all my sketchbooks as well as concert tickets. Uh, because it was a good way to, to keep it pretty much as a visual diary. I, these came in like a, a blind Santa thing or something. But I would draw my hands a lot. I know I'm going through this a little quickly, but there's a lot of pages, and some of this is really a little painful to look at. So I was very, very fascinated with rats then. Let's see. Sunday closing address with Mr. Stephen King. So this is when I saw Stephen King, February 19th of 2012. But... The, one of the reasons why this sketchbook's a little painful to look at is that my depression was very, very bad at this time, and so there was a lot of not-so-nice stuff drawn in here to sort of exercise some of the negativity. Some of the stuff in here is pretty terrible that way. But again, um, movie tickets again. This is from Underworld uh, Awakening. Um... I would try different art styles, different pens. This is from uh, my trip to Warsaw and 
Relaxer, salt mine, and all this stuff. And some of the styles in here I've never really played with further or gotten farther with like this. I don't even know how I did that. It's just part of part of experimenting and part of playing around with sketchbooks. And this was from when I was reading Fan of the Opera the first time. It was a reference about how Christine and Raul were sort of playing games with each other's hearts. But pretty much this whole mess shows that I have come a long way compared to when I first started doing these sketchbooks initially when I was uh, 19 or 18, I think, yeah. And the thing is, when I was in high school, I was under the impression, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not a great artist, but I'm not a bad artist. But as I get better and as I draw more, I realize how much I have improved. Like this was a, this was a birthday card for my 19th birthday for my dad. Um, when I, when I got my lip piercing, that's, that was a fun fact. That was a birthday present to myself when I was 19. Uh, planning out my first tattoo. So that's how you can tell that this is old because I have clearly come a long way. A tattoo that ended up never coming to fruition, which is probably for the better because it's a little too angsty for my taste now. For some reason, I put pixie sticks in here. I'm still not sure why. But planning tattoos, doing uh, thumbnail sketches for classes, drawing from books. I was reading other stuff I've glued in. Uh, stuff I ended up using for class. Bad caricatures of previous outfits. I miss these boots still. I used to have these really, really big stack. Uh, demonias. Uh, it was like six inches, lots and lots of buckles, but I wore them until they basically fell apart on my feet and they were ungodly heavy, which was not exactly nice in the Savannah heat. Uh, this was a cute sticky note that my roommate left me. Despite the fact that she was this little itty bitty blonde thing, she is still very goth accepting and precious and I'm still friends with her today. Uh, another one of my close friends from college, I draw caricatures of her all the time. I don't even know who this is or why that's in here. This was a very charming uh, Valentine's Day card from my friend, which is just an anatomically drawn heart. And inside says, Alex, I am, um, mm, I ate your bees, which if you've ever seen the BBC show or not BBC, but the English sitcom uh, Black Books, then it makes slightly more sense. My friends and I were very, very much into that. And I still love it, but. This was experimenting with uh, gouache, I believe. And this was also something I would do a lot when I wanted to figure out poses to use. I would sometimes just do itty bitty uh, stick people to try and figure out poses for things, which would sometimes turn into draw uh, further drawings when I went and saw Cabin in the Woods. When I went and saw Spring Awakening, well, that was put on by my school, I was incredibly not prepared for that play. Uh, one of my friends. And there is my first tattoo, which it ended up being a little bigger than actual size. And this was initially going to be a chess piece that I don't want to do anymore. But one of the reasons why I ended up going with this uh, tattoo is the idea was even if I grew and I got better at my art, I could look back and do, oh, that's how I drew when I was 18. I have gotten a lot better. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw M in the theater which was nice. That movie's really, really good. Uh, again, another thumbnail sketch. This was something I had one of my friends draw in my sketchbook, courtesy of a rat puppet that I had, sprayed with wine for some reason. Had all these cutout rats around. Got a bottle, I, bought a, the, I bought a lot of stuff from uh, A.S. for Arsenic my freshman year. I was very, very much into her stuff. But this one is very cringeworthy. This is really not my best sketchbook, but we all start somewhere and I figured I would show it and each sketchbook gets progressively better. Thank gods. Anyway, till next time, Darklings.